Riders, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Do some park and brake shoes on a Hyundai Sonata. Customer request wants me to swap out his shoes. Not happy with all these park and brakes hold. So I'm going to bring you guys along, show you the process. So first thing first, we've got to get down to them. Now, the beauty of this car, it's Canadian, and the guy goes and gets it sprayed every year. It's pretty thick, pretty goopy under here. However, everything seems to come apart just lovely, which is nice. I think he uses, I think he uses Crown, he told me. Because I know when he comes here, anything we take apart, we got a fluid film or crown the heck out of it. So we're gonna take, get the brake caliper off. Can't see back there. Got it going. Going blind. So we'll get them cracked loose. I'm gonna take and just pull over on the caliper just a little bit, just to relieve the tension off it. Just so the pads slide off easy. Now the pads on this are not that old. We got flat and a lock washer on them. Now we'll just pull our caliper off. Now, if you need brake pads, you know, now's the time to do that, obviously, but these ones are not that old. So we're just going to leave that set to the side. Just slip it off. Pull our brake rotor off. Now we're going to take clean this out. It's got a lot of brake dust and, you know, goop in it. We don't want to get on our new pads, shoes. Now these ones don't appear to be physically wore down, but apparently no matter what the adjustment is, they just don't have good holding power. So he brought me a set of Beck Arnleys that we're going to stick on there. Now it's kind of difficult to get you guys a good angle. I'll do the best I can. You got an upper spring, lower spring. Fortunately on these Hyundais, everything's on the outside. So I find the easiest way is I just reach in with a pair of needle nose. I'm gonna grab right on the hook on that spring and just pull it back and release it. They don't have a ton of tension on it. And then you should be able to slip it right out of there. So that's the upper and then on the lower, gonna do the same exact thing. That one's got a little bit more beef on it and that's the lower. Now apparently this hardware Apparently, have you guys seen the Apparently Kid on YouTube? I'll put a link there. The kid's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> so distracted. Apparently, this hardware is not that old, so we are going to reuse that. <laughs> oh, that little kid's so funny. He got an interview like at the state fair. You got to see it. If you haven't seen it, you probably seen it. I think the kid was on the Ellen show. Uh, so now we're going to take and... You can use a cup tool. We're gonna to push in on these cups, but honestly, they're a little bit difficult to get to with the tool. So I find using a pair of needle nose actually works pretty good. Grab on the outside of the cup, hold the pin on the backside with your digit, this one, um, and then push in on the cup and then just give it a quarter turn. Don't let it go flying, because it'll get you. And then take the cup and the spring off. I'll show you, and then our shoe should be loose and then the adjuster hits the floor because we can take that out so here's the adjuster that goes in the bottom all right and then same thing on the other side you've got the cup and pin and spring so I'm gonna push that in take it out I moved the camera and show you but it's exactly the same as the front one you just did if it's your first time doing it you're gonna drop the spring about 30 or 40 times but I'll show you how they work. Pretty simple. So we'll push these out. You'll see the head of the nail has a little bit of a head on it. And then a spot. So they just come through. Almost dropped it, but I got it. So they just come through. When you push them through, push down, they quarter turn and lock. All right, pretty simple. Pull the nails out. Now if your hardware is all rusty and crusty, it needs to be changed. 
um, you know, particularly these nails, because if these break, then the shoe comes out, hits the back of the hub, and it's a bad day. So what I'm going to do now, because he does have, you know, corrosion preventive measures done on stuff, I'm not going to get in here and, you know, whizzy wheel everything. I'm just going to take and clean off the mounting areas for the shoes and, you know, bust any loose stuff out of here. So you want these nice and rust free if you can, but mostly smooth. I think there is one, two, three, looks like six mounting pads. Hannah, will you give me a uh, wire brush, a big wire brush? If they're real bad, you gotta come in with a whizzy wheel. Big one? Yes, please. And you got to get all whizzy on them. Those look pretty good. Now I'm just going to make sure that there's no big chunks of rust in here. Don't breathe it in. Stop breathing. Hold my breath, Annie. Keep holding. All right, so that looks fantastic. Now, the uh, actuator assembly up here on this one is heavily lubed. I'm not going to spray it off a brake clean. Yes, you heard that correctly. I'm just going to take a few of the little chunks of rust that got on it. Just knock them off. It is in good shape. The vehicle is a stick shift, so he does use this uh, parking brake quite often. If yours is all seized up, you'd have to pull the whole mechanism out. I think to do that, I don't know if you could just unhook the cable and sneak it out or if you'd actually have to take the wheel bearing off. That I don't know, but we're very fortunate because this one is all loosey-goosey. Now, you'll take a little bit of anti-seize paste. Don't get it on you. Of course that's inevitable and I put a little bit on the face where the pads shoes if I say pads just assume I mean shoes where they sit just go around and hit up all those surfaces it's going to keep them from getting all crusty again and provide it with some lubrication just like doing regular rear brake shoes on you know a vehicle same process just a little smaller and a little more annoying because they're behind the up here all right so that is all good let me go get our new shoes there we go so the shoes are actually the same like I say you got some Beck Arnley's so just line them up make sure the friction material is the same usually park and brake shoes are but you know I'm sure there's some instances where they are not I guess I'll start on the side that you can see so we'll stick our nail back in on these make sure you get the you know, you can see the difference between the top and the bottom. So this is the top that's going to sit on where it pivots and then the actuator is going to go in there. Not really concerned about that right at this point. We stick them in. Hold it with your finger. This is where things go flying. Usually you can stick these springs back in by hand. Once you get it lined up over the nail head, just give it a push with your thumbs. There we go. You can turn it just a little bit and then finish it off with the pliers. There's that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I wish I could get you a little better angle. I can't because then you'll be right in my way. But it's the same thing. Push the nail through. The biggest thing, make sure you got the shoe right side up. Slide it in. Try not to get your fingers in your never sees. Stick the cup over, like I say, just kind of hold it with your thumb. Get your fingers in here, push it in, turn it, and that's it. So then what we'll do is we'll get the actuator in. Usually I just stick it in one shoe, slide the one shoe over, and then just kind of hold it, and then slide the other shoe over. 
and that's pretty much that. And then you can put your top spring back in. There you go, Henry. I dropped on the floor. You're closer. Only because you're shorter. Yes, I am. Thank you. So then we take, hook your spring into your vice grips. There is no right side up or upside down to this spring. Just as this side out. Hook it over there. Bring it over. Slip it in the slot. And I like to come through the screwdriver and just give it a little push, make sure it's in all the way. Which it is in this case. And then we'll go down and do the bottom spring. So what we'll do before we put the bottom spring in is put the star adjuster in here. Now this one's nice and freed up. Of course it's relatively new. We'll put just a dab of never sees on it. That way we can make sure we get it behind our ears before the end of the day. Thread that back in. Even if you don't touch it. Even if you don't touch it. You just look at this stuff Hannah. It's going to get you. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. And then on the other side also make sure it's a little never seize on that. You don't want it to seize. Now this one has quite a bit of slop in it. Chances of this one seizing or slim to none. And it already has a fair amount on there. Now what I do when I install these, I install them in a way in which when I stick my screwdriver through the rotor, when I flick it up, it actually adjusts it out. So that's how I do it. So both sides are the same. So in this case, the threaded portion is going to be faced towards the back of the car here on the driver's side. Now that is not true for all star wheel adjusters, so do not take that advice. That is how I'm doing it on this car. So before we put the spring in, we will stick our adjuster up in here. Let's hold it on to one shoe. Get it on the other. Hopefully you guys can see. Probably not. Let me get some light up in here for you. Bam. Try that. Wow, it's like a professional studio. And then again, we'll use our vice grips on our lower spring. Hopefully I've got it in the right position. Hook that. Wrong hole, fella. In the slot. Come out to the other slot. Unhook it. And that's it. We're in. And then the spring will actually sit against the star wheel. And that's going to provide the resistance. It's the piece of resistance. So when you're adjusting it, you know, it comes up and hits that spring again. See what I'm saying? So when we reach to the rotor and we're turning it, each click is going to be because that spring hits the adjuster wheel. So we're just going to kind of recenter the shoes. Uh, if we've got any smudges on them, we'll wipe it off. I'll come over in the parts washer real quick here. Oh, dun dun. <laughs> just in case I forget to insert the music. I'm just getting all the old brake dust and crap out of the rotor right now inside here. I don't know if it's accumulation of, you know, uh, crown or never seize or mixing it with the old brake shoe dust. But we're just going to get all the old stuff off initially. There you go. I wouldn't let you down. Porch washer is fine, but it's kind of oily and has junk in it, so we give it the full douche down of the brake clean. I should just have my parts washer full of brake clean. Ah, oh, I love this stuff. There, that should be good. So before we slide our rotor on, customer requests that I never see his hub faces. So we're going to do that for him. He likes his never sees. That's like a tin man waiting to happen. Oh yeah. One of us going to get it today here. Right now, I already got it on my arm, I can tell. Got down your back a few years oh, yeah. here. Find it inside your truck two days later. All right, so we did what the customer asked. Now the rotor I've already cleaned out. Obviously, you guys saw with the brake clean, but I did take a little brake clean on a rag, wipe it off. So the inside is nice and clean and dry. 
we do have to line up our screw hole. So we'll slip that on. We will install our screw. Now if your screw is MIA gone, missing, not there, broke, don't worry about it. You don't really need it. It does make the process of adjusting the parking brake a tad easier, but it is not necessary. We raise our car up here. Make sure you do this before you put the caliper on. We're gonna pull the rubber out. Because what happens is if you put the caliper on now and you go to push this in and it falls in all the way, well, then you gotta tear everything back apart. So now we're gonna spin our open hole down to the adjuster. And you guys seen how I was flicking that star wheel. So we're gonna come in here, if I can find it. Find me a light. There she is. We're going to tighten it up until it's tight. <laughs> All the beeping going on. Oh, they're filling potholes. Filling the potholes. That's like a never ending task in New York State. It's crushing it down right now. All right. So we turn the adjuster until it's actually tight. You can't move the drum. That way we know our shoes are centered. Then we're going to take them back and back off of Schmidt couple of clicks if I get to it still a little too tight that I'm gonna go to one of the other 500 potholes on Main Street there we got just a, a light amount of drag on it right now we're gonna leave that because the shoes are brand new and you actually have to kind of burnish in your parking brake shoes just like you would a regular set of brake pads or brake shoes man i've got it already uh so what we'll do or what is my habit to usually do is get the car going set the cruise use a little brake clean set the cruise about 40 and then i just cycle the parking brake on and off you know lightly obviously i don't do any like ken block stuff you guys don't know who ken block is I'm not sure what to tell you. Drive some Monster Energy Ford Focus, does some sick tricks. Lots of e-brake action. I'll wipe the rotor off, make sure that's clean, and then just stick his uh, pads back on. But yeah, drive down 40 miles an hour. You know, I'll do a couple cycles with the parking brake. Make sure they're seated, make sure they're burnished. In some cases, after you know a couple weeks of having a customer drive out, I have them stop back in. I'll just readjust the parking brake shoes, and usually they're good at that point for a long time. There's that. Not even close, am I? There we go. My first year ago. So we're gonna put the caliper back on, torque it to specs. Well, there you have it, folks. Rear parking brake shoes on your Hyundai Sonata. I think it's an 07. I'll put it in the description down below. And while you're down there, look for the video for the Apparently Kid if you haven't seen it and you need a good laugh today. Little Noah Ritter, I believe his name is. Pretty funny video. I'm gonna keep motoring. Got lots of stuff to do for this fella. He's one of them YouTube people that comes here to the shop all the way from Canada with a whole box full of parts he wants me to swap out. So wanted to show you this process. Maybe we'll show you some more stuff on this car. Um, and if you want to be sure that you see that, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, all that business. Find us around socials, Patreon. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.